uh, I hope you do have a pen and paper so that you can take notes um, and we'll give you some more tips. The picture there shows uh, a summer squash called Enterprise, and that seems to work really good in our southern climate, which is full of disease. And on the one side is a squash plant. In the middle is our cucumbers, and they are growing on a tomato cage. We're getting them to grow vertically. And you can say, if you have a small garden, you can save a lot of space by growing things vertically. And the other side has kale. First things first, um, you've got to have a rain gauge. That's real important. Water is very important with your garden. You've got to have eight hours of sun, anything less, and you're just not going to get good results. Needs to be well drained. If you have a slope, make sure you've got water close by. Fencing, that's important if you've got rabbits or deer. And soil test results, that's real easy to do. Just come up to the extension office and you'll get a soil test bag and it'll tell you how to do it. And then you bring it back and they send it off to UGA and you will have your results and it will tell you just what you need for your soil. Do you practice IPM? That's Integrated Pest Management and I'm gonna read this off there. It's a system-based approach to managing pests that your insects, weeds, diseases. Prevention's best, but it requires a commitment to pest investigation. The IPM cycle below is continuous, but should help you towards long-term suppression of pests. Learn, prevent, observe, intervene, evaluate, and plan. These are the insects. There's lots of those guys. And you really need to get out there just about every day because one minute they're there and it's like, where did they come from? Here you see the eggs and then they hatch and you can see the damage and there's the stink bug. And yeah, they really do stink. I've squashed a few and thought, what have I done? Okay, let your garden sleep in. You don't want to tidy up everything at the end of the fall. You want to leave things for the good insects to winter over in. Some insects go in the hollow stems. Also, you need to take a look at the Georgia Pest Management Handbook, and they have some organic strategies in there, and that's very important. This is the plant row for the hungry again, and we practice IPM, and it's an organic garden in Cobb County that grows approximately 2,000 pounds of organic food every year, and the produce is donated to uh, charities and food pantries in need, and there is Rob, and he is our um, extension agent, and he is looking at a jar of a bug that we have never seen before. And it was a false, I uh, just potato. left my brain, false, but potato. false potato beetle, left my brain. How about that? And uh, never seen it before. So stuff is moving all the time. And here we are, we're looking at the beetle again, and we're going about checking for different diseases and bugs. Here we are uh, on a plant row day, which is usually Wednesday, and we pick all our crops. We select the very best ones, if it's messed up that doesn't go, and we weigh them, and then we take them around to the different places. And here's a whole big bunch of us on a good, day when we've really picked a lot of good crops. There's a cabbage, and this is from CCYA, which works with young adults and older teenagers. And then over there is 
Trompicina squash, and this is grown vertically. And it's amazing how the plants can hold on to heavy things. We've even grown small watermelons vertically. So you can get more in your small garden than you think. And this is garlic. November is a great time for planting garlic here. This is an heirloom garlic that came from Kennesaw and it probably goes back 150 to maybe even 200 years. We're not exactly sure. And on the other side, you can see how they look when they come up. It may take them a little while and uh, next thing you know, they just start growing and then you harvest them sometimes June or July, depends on the weather. Here's a garden planner and notebook, and this is a great guide, and it's done by a really good gardener, Amy Whitney. This is her second book. She has another book about fall gardening, and it's really just chock full of good information. We recommend starting small. If you start with too big of a garden, sometimes it overwhelms you. You group the heavy feeders, such as potatoes, tomatoes, cabbage, lettuce, and onions together to help manage fertilization. And having the book, the notebook, it has you write down your soil amendments, weather information, which can vary from year to year. So it's important that you go back and look. Variety selections of plants, your planting days and dates to harvest, disease and insect problems, watering and fertilization practices, and then you keep track of what is grown where. That is good for your crop rotation. And we have all kinds of pamphlets available. And uh, all you have to do is give us a call at the Extension Office. A small garden can grow a lot of food and you can see all the devices that are used to grow them vertically. And you can't start them too young. Get your children in the garden. They love it. They love to get dirty. They love to sprinkle and water and they love to plant seeds. Water and irrigation are very important. Trickle irrigation is the most efficient Soaker hoses and emitters and drip tape. Overhead sprinklers have a tendency to not have good results because of uneven water application, and it can just cause diseases and fungus issues. Soil testing, I talked about that before. It's very important. And UGA makes it so easy. All the instructions are on their bag. And using cardboard or mulch can reduce weed seeds from germinating while your garden's between plantings. And for raised beds, having a layer of cardboard at the very bottom and then adding your soil on top, the cardboard actually draws worms, which are really good for your garden. Composting and vermicomposting are also important. And we have lots of good pamphlets that can show you step-by-step step exactly what to do.